right, welcome. Today we're going to take a look at the Miltech Simulations Super Carrier Pro package. Uh, this package comes with two carriers, the uh, CVN78 and the CVN76. So what you'll be getting is the USS Gerald Ford and the uh, USS Ronald Reagan. Uh, this package retails for $14.99 and let me tell you, it is worth every penny so we are on the deck of the Gerald R Ford was built and launched in 2013 so this is by far one of the most modern carriers to date in the uh, Navy Armada uh, I don't know if they meant to do that though I don't know if that's a a goof up there when they were making that, but that doesn't look very good. I don't think the Nimitz class or the Ronald Reagan has that issue. So this does add quite a bit of life to your flight deck. Um, as you can see, we have crewmen your different flight crews, more aircraft, and there's a little something to see. And none of this slows down my frame rates. So that's what I'm really impressed about. But for 15 bucks, this is well worth um, the ability to add a detailed, a two detailed, highly detailed carriers to Flight Simulator. Now, this package comes with both uh, moving carriers and static carriers. So, um, you'll have seven locations that are static that, that are throughout the world and you'll have seven locations that are moving throughout the world. And uh, there is a map that is available from their website that shows you where each carrier is located. So we're gonna just jump into the nuts and bolts here and we'll take a look at the actual program itself. So you go up here and you bring up Super Carrier. Um, Actually, first off, I need to talk about the purchase process. Uh, you go to their website, you buy the product off their website. I did read that it is going to be available via the marketplace, but I bought it off their website. And what I and so you have to download this other app called uh, Contrail via their website, and that gives you access to. Um, your download and what you do is you install this it's it's kind of a just a manager is all for uh for different uh it's a payware manager for different stores and you just go in log in for the miltech site and then it takes you right where you need to go and does the installation process for you but i don't know if i like the extra step it, it just seems like it's easier just to download it extract it and put it in the community folder so anyways we are looking at the miltech supercarrier uh, box pay no attention to that uh, cargo ship out there um, you will notice that this seems to happen quite a bit when you're uh, on these carriers and it's not a fault of the program it's all the AI ship traffic so um, this would be your uh, landing lights, uh, or your landing system for your plane. And you can also, it has modern arresters, I believe for this particular carrier. I don't believe they're in the Nimitz. But you go to control, and this is where you can pick the different sections of the ship. Um, you can teleport your aircraft to a parking area, runway or approach in this case it says hangar I can't get the hangar part of this to work right and I don't know what I'm doing wrong um, 
as we tour the ship, I'll show you what I mean. It, it, it doesn't display like the screenshots. And I don't know if that's... I, I don't know what that's all about. Uh, they do also have a Discord community that you can join. Um, so, just so you know. Controls. So, if we're going to launch an aircraft. So, we want to take... We're in the F-18 up here. And... Uh... I'm sitting here in a parking spot, so we're going to need to fire it up. So we put this on runway, and it teleports it right to the runway. Externally, this thing is a beast, and is nicely, nicely detailed. The level of detail that went into creating this ship Incredible. One thing that I'd like is maybe some other sound effects some atmospheric sound effects of the carrier and uh, you know noises that you would hear on the carrier it is one impressive looking ship and we are on a static carrier right now You can also bring down the uh, elevators. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll do that because that is kind of fun to watch. That, you bring this down again. Go to controls. And you want to lower, these are your elevators here. You have three of them. So let's lower this one. Okay, now you don't have an elevator back there on this one. So, alright. So what we want to do now is we're going to go ahead and lower one of the elevators. It's kind of one of the added extra features that takes you down into the bowels of the ship. Click on that, and that should start lowering the deck. There it goes. That almost feels like it's real time, doesn't it? <laughs> You can, if your uh, aircraft is parked inside the ship, you can actually taxi it out onto these elevators and ride them up if you want to. So this might be where it draws the interior, maybe. Possibly? We'll see. Sorry. Mm. Okay. Well, elevator's down, but still, there's the interior. And I don't know how you get those doors open. Or if you can. But that's the elevator on the 
lake area. It's one of the elevators. The other one is over here. And that again is the same. You just not click on that. Click on this. Controls. That one. Okay, so as I suspected, with the moving characters, you get the fully detailed uh, cargo deck, or hangar deck, on the carrier. And then apparently with the static uh, carriers, you only get the top part of the carrier, which is perfectly okay. So where I thought there was an issue, there was not. The detail for the carriers on the, uh, for the moving carriers seems to be a little different. There's just little extra features here and there. So that is probably the way it is meant to be experienced. Now, unfortunately, you can't start. At least I haven't been able to figure out how. Unless you can use the app. Let's go ahead and try that. You have your conning tower. Again, we're on the Gerald R. Ford. Look at how detailed and complex that is. Outside of Singapore. Oh, here comes that cargo ship again. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll uh, hook up to the arrestor, or not arrestor cable, the catapult, and we'll go for a quick launch. To do this part, you need to go here. We're going to move this over here. And you're going to pick which um, catapult you're going to launch off of. So we'll pick this one. Once you pick that, see the guys actually appear out there. Over here! Okay, and we need to taxi over there. So they have a quick taxi. I actually prefer to steer the plane myself. The quick taxi, well, you just give it a little power and you move left or right and it's like moving in slew mode. I would rather just control the airplane, but that's just me. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and that's how you do that. So, make sure you turn off the quick taxi. That guy's all set for us. Parking brake is set. So the next step that we need to do is go to that. That puts you in the in the launcher. And it brings up the blast shield. 
Okay, and green means we're ready. So once we are ready, we click this again and we'll get the signal to spool. We'll go ahead and spool up the engines. That means you're pretty much done until you're ready to land with the uh, Miltech Supercarrier screen there. So we'll go ahead and shut that off. But it's pretty easy. Um, I, I was able to figure it out pretty fast, so that should tell you something. Um, I don't believe those guys would be allowed within Clear the, uh, the carrier group like that, but again, that's because I have a lot of the AI ship traffic installed, and you just kind of stuck looking at them. But you do have escort vessels, and we'll go take a look at those when we jump over to the... Uh, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, we'll take a look at those when we jump over to the uh, Ronald Reagan. One two four decimal zero five Navy two zero zero. I have not found an airplane that has it's built for uh, carrier landings that does not work yet. Uh, this one, this is my personal favorite. I really like the F fourteen. Uh, The, I'm not really crazy about the default F-18s that came with 2020, but they're still decent. This one, I really like this one. So, there you are. That's going to be the USS Gerald R. Ford and how you launch from a carrier. So, let's go ahead and jump to the uh, next one. All right, so now we're looking at the uh, Ronald Reagan, a considerably older aircraft carrier, a little bit different design. sitting on the deck in the F-14 from DC Designs. And again, the carrier deck does not disappoint. Lots of detail. Um, you couldn't ask for more. And this one has two elevators in the rear and one in the front, I believe. Yep. And this is another one you go into the actual hangar deck. And this is what I get. So I don't really know what's going on here, why it's displaying that way, other than you're not really going to spend much time down there anyways.
Here's your arrestor cables. What I have found is the point. I always find that starting it in the actual right here gives me the most stable start. If I try to start it in a parking spot or even inside the carrier, the airplane seems to flip out. So I just start it from up here. I mean, I've, I've actually had occasion where I tried to start down in the hangar bay and the plane flipped over on its side and did all sorts of weird stuff. So, um, just if you're going to start, just start it from up here and then uh, explore the rest of the ship, kind of like I'm doing. All right. Well... That is going to be the Nimitz. I'm sorry, not the Nimitz. The Ronald Reagan the Nimitz class carrier. And then if you look out over there, you will also see the escort ships. Well, let's go ahead and go take a look at those before we do anything. Escort ships are nicely detailed as well. In fact, I would assume that you could probably land a helicopter on them. I have not tried that, but you probably could. That is your escort group, or your carrier group as a whole. Then you got another one over there, so you got a total of three escort ships. Mm -hmm. I would assume you also have a submarine out there somewhere, but I I doubt very much that's modeled in this. <laughs> All right, so this is the Nimitz class. This would be the moving version of the Nimitz class. I wish there was a way you could start on the carrier deck, but there is not. You have to start in the air and land on the carrier. But having the moving carriers adds quite a bit more challenge because you have to compensate for the moving ship when you land on it. Some atmos well, I've said this before, atmospheric sounds would be really good for this. So now I wish there was a way to pause the game without, with not just using active pause. But here's the car, um, the uh, not the carrier deck. This would be the uh, hangar deck.
So we're going to do basically the same thing we did in the last jet. We bring that little panel up. That way we have control of what we're doing. And we'll go ahead and I'll line up to this one this time. There's our crew. Parking brake is released. See, I actually prefer steering these the way they're meant to be steered. I don't know why the F-18 doesn't steer the nose wheel. Ready? That is pretty much taking off from the USS Ronald Reagan. Then your lineup is pretty much the same. You know, you do your lineup, get your speed down, get your gear down, make sure you remember your arrestor cable, and hope that you get a connection when you land. Victory one zero tree. San Juan Center Victory one zero tree, five thousand eight hundred feet. What I like also is that Flight Simulator recognizes this as an airport. So when you hold down the uh, lock, uh, lock your view onto the uh, carrier or airport view, it automatically locks onto the carrier. One two zero decimal nine or victory one zero three. San Juan approach victory one zero three six thousand nine hundred feet. Victory one zero three San Juan approach altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two continue as planned. You know, I was thinking about a game from a long time ago called Jet Fighter. And the first time I saw it was in a computer store on the Amiga. And it was they they it had like an ultra realistic carrier landing mode. And you had to get everything right to get the plane down onto the uh, carrier deck. And I, I believe it took place in San Francisco. It was a really rudimentary version of San Francisco. But, man, I love that game. That was a fantastic sim. And I think they had a follow-up, and then finally, or they had that one, and then they finally released it for, uh, would have been PCs at the time. But I remember, look, I wanted that Amiga so bad. But, uh, it was just a matter of waiting. And then finally all of it was released for the PC eventually. I think we had uh, different ver different versions of Jet Fighter. I, I vaguely remember Jet Fighter 2. Those were the days, man. I mean, remember some of those old sim games that we used to play. F-11 Stealth Fighter. Um, what was some of the other ones? Uh, Gunship. Man, I spent hours playing Gunship.
Okay, let's bring down our carrier system. We gotta bring down the tail hook. Gear down. I'm horrible at this, so uh, practice makes perfect. So eventually, things will uh, get better. We're going to probably dork this up too. I don't know how these guys do this. Roger, ball. Right for line up. Don't go high. Way off. Oh, that was horrible. Oh. Oh, wow, I caught it. Well, that was terrible. <laughs> That is Miltex Super Carrier Pro. Excellent, excellent add-on for Flight Simulator. Uh, sure, there's a few minor glitches, uh, but I'm sure over time those will be fixed. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that I've inspired you to go check this out. $14.99 on the Miltech website. It will be available eventually, I believe, on the marketplace. But if you want it now, you're going to need to go to Miltech and get it from there. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. All right, check out the arrestor cable. And then if I go into the cockpit and release it, release, it, bring the tail hook up, it disappears. Neat little detail there.